Hi, my name is Grant Kramer, and I'm a professor emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. This episode is episode three of season three of My Backyard Vineyard. Welcome. So we've had very wet weather. It's just rained here again. There's water puddles in on the vineyard, but it's time to talk about mineral nutrition because I sent in soil samples for a soil analysis knowing that we have problems in this vineyard from last year with potassium deficiency, boron deficiency, nitrogen deficiency, and acidification of the soil. So I've got my results and I've done some treatments already and now I'm going to explain them to you. They're looking pretty good at this point, so I'm very happy with what's going on. So I collected soil samples on March 11th, shortly after pruning the vines. As I wanted to be ahead of the game, I knew that my soil was already low in nutrients from the previous season and that a number of deficiencies showed up. So to get a handle on it right away and get the vines going well, I collected soil from eight different locations, three inches down below the surface to make sure it was down off of the surface underneath eight different vines in the two different vineyards, my left and right vineyard. I already know from the previous season that the two samples that I collected from the left vineyard and the right vineyard were essentially the same. So there was no point in doubling my cost, but to combine all of the samples into one sample and send it off to a &L Western for a single analysis, which should come out very reliably. For more details on how to do a soil analysis, I suggest you go back to my video from season two, episode five, from my backyard vineyard series on soil sampling and analysis. I received this analysis from ANL Western Laboratories via an email after about two weeks after I sent my samples in. And the results here in this graphical form support what the analyses were last year. And it includes the fact that the soil was low in nitrogen, low in potassium, and low in boron. These were also problems last year, which were confirmed by petiole analysis, which is essential. There are other nutrients here that appear to be low that did not show up in my petiole analysis last year. I will do a, a petiole analysis at bloom time when that time comes to confirm or not whether I need to do additional fertilizer applications. So it appears I need to do another treatment of nitrogen and another treatment of potassium and another treatment of boron. They don't recommend doing the nitrogen until after bloom. In addition, the pH of the soil has gone up a little bit to a pH of 7.4 which is a little bit high, but not too high, but it's going in the wrong direction as last year, it was down to 7.1 after I treated the soils with sulfur. And I want to continue that trend to get it towards 6.5. A pH of 6.5 in the soil will provide the maximum availability for all the nutrients in the soil, but in particular, it will improve the micronutrients that look deficient in the soil analysis but actually they may be more absorbable by the plant at this pH as we saw last year. The first treatment that I'm going to apply will then be the sulfur treatment as that will increase the nutrient availability of the additional nutrients that I'm adding as well. The next treatment will be the liquid boron treatment, which is important because boron deficiency is a really big problem for pollination and fruit set. And so we wanna make sure that there's enough boron there to get good fruit set. I'll follow that up with a potassium treatment as I don't want to overload the vines with too many nutrients at the same time as this could cause a problem with salt toxicity. And then after bloom, I will add the nitrogen treatments. These are the fertilizers I will use for my treatments. Again, I'll use a soil acidifier to the soil. I'll make up a boron 
treatment from my stock solution of 20 millimolar boric acid. And I, this year, I'm going to add potassium sulfate as a direct fertilizer to the soil. So the first amendment will be this soil acidifier. So let's go through the calculations I need to do for soil acidification for this year. As we know from a previous video, to lower the pH from about 7.5 to 6.5, which is the ideal pH, requires about 1,000 pounds per acre of elemental sulfur for clay soils. Now, 7.4 is pretty close to it, so I'm approximating to about the same amount. Each vine hole was estimated to be about one cubic feet. Therefore, if we take 1,000 pounds and divide it by 43,560 cubic feet per acre, that's equal to about 0 0.0229 pounds per hole or vine. This is approximately 10 grams of elemental sulfur. Since my bag of soil acidifier here is only 18% elemental sulfur, I will need to add about 50 grams of acidifier per vine, which is approximately one quarter cup. If you want more details in terms of these calculations, then I encourage you to go back to my Backyard Vineyard Season 1, Episode 5, for more details. So we're going to apply sulfur treatment here to my plants. And to do this, we'll prep the soil by getting it loosened up first before we add a quarter cup of sulfur to the plant, to the vine. For each vine, we'll sprinkle this around like so. And then this could get too concentrated here, so we want to work this in and make it as deep as we can without hurting roots, of course. But by getting it down into the ground, it's going to react with the ground and mix in well. And then I'm going to water this in later when I add my liquid boron treatment. Now, last year I had to give multiple boron treatments with treatments of 20 micromolar boron because I was being very conservative about my applications because too much boron can create boron toxicity. So this year I'm going to add 50 micromolar. Now last year I tested a 50 micromolar treatment on some plants in my vineyard and there were no negative effects. So I can be assured that the 50 micromolar treatment will not be too much. However, it still may be too little and ultimately in the end, I may need to add some boron fertilizer directly to the soil for a more long lasting a treatment. At any rate, this will be a conservative treatment because I want to be sure I have some adequate boron before flowering, as this has an important effect on pollination and the cluster formation, where if you don't have enough boron, you can get this hens and chicks syndrome, which has got small berries and large berries in the cluster. So I'm gonna apply this boron treatment right after adding the acidifier to the soil to water in the acidifier and give a boron treatment at the same time. Later on in the season, I may need to give more boron as this deficiency has showed up several times over last year with the previous treatments. So we'll come back and reevaluate the boron treatments later in the season. Like last year, I applied the boron treatment as a 50 micromolar solution by taking the 20 millimolar stock and diluting it down with water, adding it to this bucket, and then dumping a gallon of this bucket into each one of the vines as seen here. For the potassium treatments, I estimated that it would be about a half a pound of potassium sulfate to be added to each vine to provide enough potassium for the next couple of years. However, a half a pound seemed too large of a treatment and I would get fertilizer burn on the leaves of the vines. 
as seen here, I applied just a quarter cup. Then I've mixed the fertilizer in by adding water. And this is what it looked like. And after an hour or two, you can see that all of that potassium fertilizer has dissolved into the soil. With additional watering and additional rainfall, this will wash all of these nutrients into the soil to a deeper soil profile. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, then please like it on my YouTube channel. It'll bring attention to the video and make an opportunity for other people to view this video. And if you really like this video, then I suggest you subscribe to my channel where you can find other videos on viticulture, on grapes, on winemaking practices and enology, and on plant physiology. Have a great day.